boom. All right, Warriors, we are live in the quarantine zone. It's Coach Josh here. It's Friday morning, and we have a wonderful uh, timed event for you today. And we're going to be doing a lot of fun stuff. Today you'll need uh, a mat to be on the ground, do some fun stuff on the ground. And if you have a light kettlebell or a dumbbell, we're going to be doing some swings and cleans. And uh, if you don't have anything to do that with, you'll just do a bunch of squats, which is also good for you. I've been getting a lot of, uh, oh my god, my butt is sore uh, feedback. So that's the idea, right? We want to be sore from moving forward, not sore from moving backwards. But I digress. So we're talking about the uh, uh, everyday heroes. So I don't know if you, know if you guys remember this, these two kids from Pennsylvania, uh, Tamar Boggs and Chris Garcia. But uh, in 2013, uh, a little girl named Julia was uh, abducted off of her front lawn. She's five years old, and uh, her mom uh, immediately called the police because some, some stranger in a maroon uh, sedan come and picked up her daughter from her uh, front yard. And uh, it was a very scary thing for you know, a mom to go through. So she called the police, and uh, the, the police were out um, immediately combing the neighborhoods in uh, this town uh, in, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, looking for Julia. And uh, Tamar Boggs and Chris Garcia, these are 12 and 13 year olds that are helping their friends move. So they're moving couches and stuff into a truck and they're out there uh, working and the uh, police officer rolls through and uh, asks them if they've seen a, anybody in a maroon car or a little girl just sort of um, putting the word out and uh, they, they said, no, we haven't seen anybody like that. And so they, uh, the, the police kept, kept combing the neighborhood looking for uh, the, the, the car. And then Tamar and Chris were like, well, you know what? We're not really doing anything besides helping this guy move. Let's, let's like get on our bikes and like, we'll just scoot around and see what we can find. And sure enough, a few blocks later, uh, uh, these two kids on their bikes see uh, a, maroon, a maroon car. And they ride their bikes up to sort of investigate. And as they get closer, they see this uh, older white guy uh, with uh, green pants and like an American flag shirt and, uh, and, and he's got a little girl in the car with them. And so they decide to follow him and this, this, this maroon car is weaving in and out and trying to stay off the main roads. And, but if, you, if you've ever been to Pennsylvania, it's like, you know, super old. So the streets don't make sense. There's a lot of dead ends and cul-de-sacs everywhere. So that this maroon car kept trying to take a side street but not able to get through the neighborhood and had to turn around. So then the boys on their bikes would be able to follow him again. And so they, they kept pursuing and, and uh, uh, getting closer and closer to this guy. And they knew that he was uh, the, probably the, the kidnapper. And so they were trying to figure out how to communicate that to, to the police. But they, they just kept him in, in sight. And after three, getting lost three or four times, this guy knew that he was being followed. So in order to, to get away without uh, being harassed anymore or getting caught by the police, he pushes the little girl out of the car into, the, into one of the cul-de-sacs that he was uh, turning around in. And then uh, the, the, the girl runs off, boys follow the girl, and the, the, the culprit gets away. But they are able to uh, you know, take Julia uh, to the police, and then she, Julia makes it back home the same day. And only because these couple of kids decide to um, take, take off on their bikes and start to uh, figure things out and see what they can do. And I like a lot of things about this story, hopefully you do too, that you know, this girl that's, gets kidnapped goes right back home uh, in the same day unharmed and safe and sound, and, um, and that these two teenage boys are uh, uh, you know, contributing members of society and show up in a really big way. But I also like that they didn't really have a sophisticated plan. They're like, let's just see what we can do. Like, they didn't have a lot of resources. They had their bikes. And they weren't worried about what they didn't have. They just showed up with what they did have. And that was, that was enough. And um, I, I think that a lot of times these uh, uh, heroic efforts don't require anything more than you just being present and showing up with what you have. And so uh, hats off to Tamar Boggs and, and Chris Garcia. And, uh, and great examples of how to be everyday heroes for us uh, warriors as we uh, show up for ourselves with what we got and, uh, and, and present as best we can for our friends, family, and community every day. Whew. Big story, I know, yeah, good stuff. 
Um, all right, so uh, we are going to we are going to warm up our bodies, and uh, we're going to do some stretches. We're going to start off with an inchworm to get get the heart rate up today. Hopefully, you're listening to some kind of music on your end. I am going to do an inchworm, so my feet are about hips width apart. I'm going to bend over, and I'm going to crawl out to my full length. I'm going to walk back, leading with my hips, touch my toes, come all the way back out, feeling that hamstring stretch, keeping those knees straight. I'm going to do five reps, and then I'm going to add a push-up, and I'm going to do another five with a push-up. If you don't want to add a push-up, that's perfectly fine. Just knock out 10 inchworms. Getting it done. Warming up those shoulders in that overhead position. Coming back. Boom. One more. Ugh. Woo -hoo. All right. Now we've uh, got some blood pumping. We're going to lie on our back. We're going to do a hamstring mobility. So my back is flat on the floor. Legs are in the air. I'm locking out one leg. The other leg, I'm going to touch the floor. With the, both legs are locked out. I'm switching hips or switching hands all the way down. Back up, that's one. We're gonna do five on each side. Keeping that leg locked. Switching the other side. Two. To make it more challenging, pull the toes back towards you. That's called ankle dorsiflexion. And that increases the stretch of that fascia on the posterior chain. That's three. Keep working. Four. Oh, this feels good on my hamstring. And five. Ha! While we're on the ground, we're gonna do the archer. So, we're gonna rotate those shoulders. When I do this archer, guys, I'm gonna try and flatten my shoulders on the ground. So I'm gonna move in an angle here so you can hopefully see what I'm doing. So I'm going to inhale and then when I get to here I'm going to reach out and I'm going to try and touch my shoulder and my hand to the ground on the outside. I'm not able to do that just yet but if you're if you're a Heather or if you're a uh, Sarah maybe you can. Oh, I'm going to do five reps inhaling as I breathe in and rotate then I'm going to reach as far as I can, not going to force anything. That's three for me. Four for me. Oh, it's five. Now I'm going to switch it up to the other side. Again, I'm inhaling, drawing the fingertips up the chest, trying to touch the ground, with my shoulder and my wrist. Exhale as I bring it in. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. We're going for five. Whew. Do one more here. All right. Yeah. Now we're going to get our legs working. So we're going to do a lateral lunge. And when we do this, remember, when I'm doing a mobility, I'm trying to get as deep as I can with my movement. So I'm stepping out in a double wide stance. Toes are both pointed straight ahead. 
hands overlapping. I'm gonna touch the heel of my lead foot and I'm gonna, that's gonna drop my hip down and behind my knee. Touching that, coming back to the beginning. So I'm gonna lunge and return. So I'm stepping out, stepping in, stepping out, stepping in, stepping out, stepping in. So we're gonna do five easy reps per side, getting those hips warmed up, getting those legs, the hamstring stretch, adductor loosened up. Yeah, I love me some deep lunges, Warriors. Looking good. Loving it. Chris, looking a little tight today. Wanna roll? You better roll out that upper back. You don't know that about this, my technology though. It goes to, it's like a two-way mirror. I could see you even if you don't turn on your video. All right. Five per side, excellent. Now, if you are doing some uh, squats today, you don't have a kettlebell or a dumbbell, then you're gonna do some body weight squats. Every time I show you a drill, you're just gonna do 10 perfect squats. If you've got your light weight, you can stand up a dumbbell high or you can do a kettlebell like I'm gonna do, and you're gonna be in front of it and you're gonna warm up that hinge pattern. So I'm gonna reach my butt back, Drive the hip forward, touch. We're gonna to do 10 reps here. Squeezing my glutes. Boom. Chest is up. Nice, knees are bending quite a bit, especially when I have to reach behind me because that forces me to go a little bit deeper than I normally would. So, 10 reps. Now we're gonna stand over the, the weight or the kettlebell. Chest stays up, reaching my butt back, driving my hips forward, driving my hips forward, getting it done, squeezing my glutes, touching that handle, touching that weight. Now I don't have to go as deep, really focusing on contracting the glutes, squeezing the glutes on the way up, locking out those hips, making it work. When you flex the glutes, the obliques naturally turn on. It's kind of cool, but you can always check yourself at the top. You can slap yourself in the abs. 10 of those. Now, again, if you're squatting, you're still going to keep going for the squat. If you've got the weight, what you're going to do is you're going to pick it up. So I'm butt back, picking that weight up, driving my hips forward into my forearms. So I'm exhaling as I come up, lock out the glutes. Boom, boom, breathe out. When you exhale, you get a little bit more contraction out of that movement. That helps the force, helps the muscle recruit, helps you burn more calories, burn more fat, build more muscle, bring forth the warrior within, all that stuff we like to do every single day. So you got your 10 reps there. Now, we're gonna do something that we don't do a lot of uh, frequently. This one is a clean. It's a fun exercise. Um, and this is a nice um, addition to the swing or anything else we got. But a clean is simply how you get the weight from the floor to your body. And uh, in this case, I'm going to do it with a kettlebell, but it works the same with a dumbbell or anything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach my butt back. I'm gonna keep my chest high, a little bit more vertical than I normally do with a hinge. So I'm gonna be very upright, but butt is back. And then I'm going to pull, I'm gonna explode through my feet, pull the weight up, up my body, and then I'm gonna drop my wrist and shoulder underneath the weight. It doesn't look, it doesn't make sense when, I, when you slow it down, but when you speed it up, it looks like this. Pop. Sitting down, pop. Setting down, pop. It's all from the hips. You know, I'm not lifting up and hoisting the weight like an upright row. I'm powering through, the, through my lower body and I'm following it up with that kettlebell. Now again, if you're just doing squats, that's fine. You just do five, or you, just, you do 10 squats. If you're doing the clean, you're doing five per side. Power it up, grip. So I'm leading with the elbow. Dragging that weight very vertical. It's not getting out in front of me. It's not a swing. It goes straight up. Powering through. 
What we're doing is we're working our traps, our shoulders, our legs all at the same time. It's quite a valuable drill, a lot of fun. So when you see the clean, if, you're, uh, if you have a weight, dumbbell or kettlebell, and you're doing that uh, clean, you're going to do five reps per side for a total of 10. If you're doing squats, you're just going to do 10 reps today. So the uh, clean is the first exercise. Oh yeah, dang it. I forgot, we got a little bonus training today, warriors. We got to take our knee grab test. Don't want to miss out on the knee grab test. Dang it. Okay, so we've been doing knee grabs for the last few weeks as practice, so you should know by now what a good knee grab looks like. I'm gonna demonstrate it. I'm here on my back. We're firing it forward. On my, I'm gripping my shin, and I'm gonna come back down. When the shoulder blades touch the ground, that's one. Firing it forward, shoulder blades touch the ground, that's two. So you have one minute to get as many reps as you can get. So you want to be fast, you want to be violent, but guess what? Uh, your old record may, uh, may not be broken today because we are not training in ideal conditions, that's okay. We are gonna do one minute of as many knee grabs as you can do. I have a timer, if you have a timer, you can use yours, but I am going to get us started together Bootsy's really trying hard to beat me, and it's not going to happen, but um, uh, I'm, I'm obviously going to root for her anyway. So we are starting in five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, so we're rolling. We're rolling as many reps as you can get. Throwing those hands, grabbing those shins. Nice bell, kicking butt there. There you go, Chris. Rocking and rolling, he's going lightning fast all the way up, all the way down. Heather making it look good, yes. Bootsy with the force of a thousand little sisters that have always been overshadowed by their older brothers. Nice work, everybody. Keep going, keep going, keep going. 30 seconds left. Crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. Go, 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 go. Remember, it counts when you hit the ground. It counts when you hit the ground. So don't stop the rock. You have less than 20 seconds remaining. Only getting, only getting those good reps. Only the good ones count. That's right, Bell. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Boom. All right. Nice work. So you got your score. If you, want to, uh, if you want to update your, your, your board, text your score to Bootsy. She'll update your uh, score. She'll tell you what your old score was and whether or not you broke a record, but you can, uh, you can reach out. So remember your score, write it down. Uh, that's your one minute knee grab test. Don't worry, we've got more tests coming up. Wouldn't want you to forget about doing those check-ins, Warriors. Wouldn't want you to forget about that. All right. Grab some water. We're still warming up for our circuit. So we just went through the kettlebell clean. The next exercise is the bear walk. So the bear walk. Your, a bear has a wide stance, straight legs, and you're gonna step out, right arm and left leg, then left arm and right leg, so you're contralateral. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk about six feet or whatever your space allows, and then you're gonna walk back. So I wanna cover about 12 feet in bear walks for one set. So you gotta give yourself maybe two or three steps forward, two or three steps back, and do that twice. Now this is where the little kids and the animals come to play too. So uh, if you have a little kid around there, they can uh, hop on your back and make it more fun, or an animal or a cat. There you go, Bob, I like the butt in the air. We gotta get the butt in the air for this one. Good, okay. 
from there, from the bear walk, we're doing the plank row. So you're going to be in a high plank, feet are wide, and I'm going to row into my chest, back down, row into my chest, back down, row into my chest, back down. And I'm moving, but I, my hips are not twisting. So if you lift and your whole body rotates that way, that's too much. So you're going to keep your glutes locked, legs locked. We're going to go five per side. So you're doing an isometric hold with one hand while you pull through. If that's too much, you could just do a shoulder tap or an elbow tap, or you could just do a high plank. But I want to see that stability coming from the shoulders and the abs. So I'm, we're going to be doing five per side. Now, the reverse crunch. Yes, one of my favorites. So what you're doing is you're on the ground. You are rolling your spine up like a carpet from the bottom to the top. So I'm here and I'm going to keep my feet and knees together and I'm going to rotate up, keeping my shoulders on the ground. Touch. So I don't want to be up on my neck. That's too far. I just want to get up to where my shoulder blades are still on the ground. So you can use the floor. Push your hands to the floor and use the floor. If you have a couch or a weight here and you want to make it a little bit easier, you can grab that weight or that couch and that will help you just a little bit. So you're going to do 10 reps. So warm it up right now. Figure out what kind of support you need. Coming up. Yeah. All right. So good. So that really is working the obliques and the, the rectus abdominis using probably the heaviest part of your body, the lower body. Unless you've just got an upper body like an orangutan like Bob. All right. So, so the reverse crunch. We've got the Reverse crunch, plank rows, bear walks, kettlebell cleans. So we've got those exercises. We're going to go all in a row. We're going to do 10 minutes of as many rounds as you can get done. So uh, you're, you're going to do uh, 10 reverse crunches, five plank rows on each side for a total of 10. You're going to do bear walking about tw 10 or 12 feet. So back and forth at least twice, a few steps in a row. So, and then uh, your, your kettlebell cleans, you're going to do five per side for a total of 10. So it's about 10 of everything for 10 minutes. Try to make it really easy. And uh, I will set the clock and I will count down and I will do, I will go at my pace. You can go faster or slower, but um, I'll be demoing the technique constantly uh, so that we can all uh, stay sharp and primed. Hopefully you're hydrated. Dedicated, educated, Alexa, play Josh's on purpose on Spotify. Josh is on purpose from Josh on Spotify. Starting in three, two, one, and we're off. All right, the clean. So I'm here. One, sitting it down, exploding through. If you're doing a clean, it's all in the legs. The upper body is not doing that much. You're just whipping up that. Wait, four, five, one, two, keeping that weight close to you, three, four, five, yes, all right, bear walk, so I'm here, just taking Five steps forward, five steps back. I'm going to do that twice. Yeah. <clears throat> Plank row. Feet wide. One. Locking out those quads. Glutes are on. Breathing while I do it. You don't want to hold your breath. Four. That five. So the hands, when you're pulling them, the hands come right into the chest, like you're about to do a, a beautiful push-up. That's also going to help your shoulders a lot as well. Reverse crunch. 
10 reps. Three. Again, keep the shoulders on the ground. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Ha. Okay. One round down. Rest as needed. I'm going to go right back into it. Two. Using my glutes, using my legs, big muscles. Three. Four. Five. Other side. One. Two. Three. If you're doing a clean, make sure your hips get low and back. If you're doing a squat, you better get those hips low. That's a squat, baby. Bear walking. So, it's kind of like a waddle. Hands and feet move together in an opposite fashion. Left arm, right leg, etc. Plank row. If you have light dumbbells, you can upgrade. If you don't, that's okay. Again, that humerus, that upper arm, should be in line with the rib cage at the top. Three. Four. Five. Yes. Reverse crunches. On, my, on the ground. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Wow. All right. Good stuff. Woohoo. Sipping some water, making sure I don't die. Oh. Five minutes, 40 seconds left. That's enough time for five, six more rounds probably, I guess. All right. Back, to, back in action. Two. Three. Four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Good stuff. Bear walking. Walk it through, walking back. Oh, back again. Stepping, stretching out that lat when I'm doing my bear walk. When I walk, I take a step out. I want to let that shoulder get away from the hip. So I'm opening it up a little bit as I walk. Reverse crunches. Or sorry, not reverse crunches. Planks. Getting a little fatigued. That's okay, that's the idea. Locking out those legs, being strong. Reverse crunch. So don't be in a hurry, don't hurry through it. You wanna get rolling up to your shoulders and then lowering down as best you can. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. Whew. Yeah. Okay. Three minutes, 20 seconds, warriors. I'm on round four, I believe, so I'm uh, moving with some, some purpose, but not, not in too, too big of a hurry. I want to make it feel good. Back, back to my clean. Two, three, four, five. Other side. One, two, three, four, five. Ha! Bear walks. Just getting the most fun out of this exercise. Stretching, hammies, working on the calves. Upper body, obviously. Get that overhead position. Biceps by the ears. Moving back and forth. If you're tight like me, you want to have a wider stance on those bears. If you've got really good hip mobility, you can go narrow. One. One. Two, back to that plank row. Three, three, four, four, five, five. Still feeling good about that. Going back to the reverse crunch. One minute, 30 seconds left. Only the good reps. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven. You want to go high, but you don't want to go up on your neck. And ha ha, ha ha, ha. All right. All right, we got one, just less than under a minute left. So it's going to be the last set. Best set indeed. I'm gonna hit my cleans. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Ha, ha ha, 12 seconds left, bear walks, getting, getting them in there, getting that one extra rep in, that one extra rep you didn't want to do, ha, oh man, that's so good, that's so good, that's the time, we're going to start our next circuit, here in a few minutes. You want to grab my phone, Bootsy? I don't know. So, what we're doing differently around this round, the second round, is we're going to do swings instead of cleans. So if you're doing squats, you can go, you can switch to swings if you want, or you can stick with squats. But the swing, I'm going to be behind the kettlebell, reach my butt back, fire it through, lock it out, exhaling forcefully, and I'm opening up that jar, not with the wrist, but with the shoulder, and that helps keep the lats engaged during that training. So we're doing the kettlebell swing, the four point hip mobility. It's gonna be a shoulder boulder building day. So I hope you enjoy shoulder stuff. So we're gonna be down here doing our, our hip mobility. And the goal here is to teach the hip how to internally rotate, meaning do this, right? So, or sorry, externally rotate. So I'm 
moving my ankle in towards the midline of my body, and I'm not trying to force it from my low back. So I want my low back to stay at the same height, and I'm just gonna move that hip in, or the foot in, just a little bit. So I'm not using my back, just using that femur and hip. So I'm touching the inside of my shoe, pushing through the pinky toe, or sorry, pinky, not toe, pinky of your hand, <laughs> to stabilize the shoulder while you do that. We'll be doing six on each side for a total of uh, 12, sorry, five on each side for a total of 10. Then uh, the T-spine push-up, you know it, you love it. What I'm doing is I'm doing a push-up, I'm lifting and rotating, dropping down, lifting and rotating, dropping down. That's, we're gonna go three per side. So I'm reaching up, following with a hand with my eyes, coming back down. So again, you don't need to be Hercules and doing it from the floor. You could do it from an elevated position. I've got my couch here. So you could do that same thing and make it a little bit more doable. Hit and rotate. So that's the T-spine push-up. Then we're gonna go right into the yoga windmill. And so I'm in this long lunge and my inside arm is stretched out. I'm gonna rotate that at the shoulder until it becomes perpendicular to the floor. Come back down, switch. Inside arm goes out, rotate up, following the hand with the eyes, coming back down, bend the elbow. Boom. We'll do three of those per side. Oh my gosh, shoulder fire. So we're doing a lot of shoulder stuff, pushing and pulling today. Really focusing on that shoulder health and hip health. And then last, but definitely not least, we're cracking in that lateral lunge with it touching the ground. So I'm just reaching out, touching the ground with my lateral lunge, just like we were doing in that warm up. So, <clears throat> stretching, pushing, pulling, very fatiguing stuff. Make sure you got your water ready, you're uh, mentally and physically prepared for the task at hand. I'm gonna get my music going so I can stay motivated. 10 minutes on the timer, starting in five, four, three, and go. So we're swinging or we're squatting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. From there, four point hip mobility. One, one. Two, again, I'm not trying to move my hips at all, J or my back, just my leg. Four, four, we're gonna do five on each side, bam. That is plenty. Now, T-spine push-up. So, feet are gonna be a little bit wide. Push-up, reach. We're doing three per side. That's one. Follow my hand with my eyes. That's two. Yeah, that's three. Yoga windmill. So I'm in that long lunge, inside hand, traveling here. Elbow bends, stretch, switch. Inside hand reaches out, back leg is straight. I'm not in a hurry, I'd rather do it well and do it fast. So if you're a yoga master, well, good. You could challenge yourself. For me, it's kind of a struggle just to keep focus on form. That's okay, that's the struggle I need. So I'm doing just fine. Going at this pace, not in a hurry. Two times through, we gotta do three times through. Rocking and rolling. Ha, still training. Lateral lunge, coming up, stepping out, touchdown. Stepping out, 
touchdown. I'm going to go three per side. Two. Two. Three. Three. Yeah. All right, one round down. Bob, get that butt lower when you're doing those lateral lunges, baby. I want to see that stretch. Ha. Swings back to the top. Seven minutes remaining. All right, 10 swings, four point hip mobility. Again, only going as fast as I can be confident. So I'm here, one, two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, five per side, that's all I need to do. T-spine push up. Again, not in a hurry. Exhale, so I reach out, forcing that push up to get better, tighter. This is the second round. Two, keep going. These exercises can be quite fatiguing. I feel this a little bit in my shoulders. It'd be weird if you didn't notice that. That's okay. But that fatigue is why you're here. From the struggle comes strength. Without, without struggle, there's no strength. If it was just easy, it wouldn't be called training for warriors. It'd be called happy tree fun time for warriors, where everyone drinks Kool-Aid, eats cotton candy. I'm just making this stuff up. But yeah, we have to struggle to grow. And I, if you're anything like most of us right now, you're growing in a lot of ways, but maybe you didn't know you were gonna grow. Maybe you didn't ask for that. That's okay. I didn't know I was gonna be doing yoga today with Josh in my training session. That's okay. It's the struggle you need. I'm doing, I'm on my second round of these windmills, really focusing on rotating that arm like a rotisserie chicken, not relying on whipping around, staying in that long lunge, keeping that back leg straight, really enjoying the fact that my heart rate is very high, really getting a lot out of this. Reaching out, up high, rotate, drop, boom, back up, okay, lateral lunge, touchdown, okay, that's one side, that's the other, that's one. Left, right, that's two. Left, right, that's three. All right, that's two rounds. We have four minutes remaining. I need a bit of a breather. Uh, Bootsy's on round seven. No, it's not a competition, Bootsy. Don't worry about it. Uh, uh. Okay, my heart rate's coming back down. My, I'm ready for some more action. With three minutes, 46 seconds remaining, I'm gonna get mine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha. Back to the shoulder game here. Hip mobility. One, two, three, four, five. Ha ha, ha ha ha. That's five. Two spine push up. Ah. One. Keeping those elbows in on the way down. Reaching up on the way out. 
in on the way down. Stay tight with that form. Even though we are working on mobility and strength at the same time, doesn't mean we don't, we're not precise. Elbows in as you drop into the push-up. All right, yoga windmill. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Ha! Here. Boom. That's right, all the way through. That was one time through. Pushing out, reaching up, rotating back. Every movement counts, every breath, every action, you have something to get from. You're giving something to this moment, you're getting something from it, making sure I'm giving it my all so that I can get the most from the training. If I need to take a break, I'll take a break. When I'm ready to move through, I'm ready to move through. Training. Burning that shoulder, really enjoying that part. Ha. All right. Lateral lunges with a touchdown. Back to the center. Stepping through, down, through. That's one. Touch, down, touch. That's two. Touch, down, touch. That's three. We have one minute, five seconds remaining. Time to go back to the top for your swings. Oh. Oh. All right. Last set. Stand strong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. All right. 20 seconds remaining. Four point hip mobility. Working on that shoulder stability, hip mobility. Shoulder blades are separated, pushing through the pinkies, touching the inside of that foot. Two, three. All right, Warriors, you've got five, four, three, two, one. That's the buzzer. That is the buzzer. Ha ha. Okay, now that you're warmed up, we can finally start training. Let's get that dessert going. 20 squats, 10 knee grabs, 20 swimmers. So the squat, if you've been squatting all day, it's great, this is a little icing on the cake. If you're like me, this will be a little bit of a refresher. Heels, shoulder width apart, toes out. I'm gonna drop down into my perfect body weight squat. Rib cage down, low back flat, power forward, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just knocking out 20. It's easy. Easy. We do way more for most people's birthday squats. 14, 15, 16. That's right. <laughs> oh, Chris Bowden just turned 50. If you guys want to do some extra squats for him, take a video of him yourself and send them to him. Post them on the group. Now we're doing knee grabs. So you've kicked out your 20 squats. Now we're going to do some knee grabs on the ground. Just like in that test we just took. Up, down, one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, throw in those arms. Eight, nine, ten. Ha. Now, last, definitely not least, the swimmers. Now, we're trying to train the upper back in that posture. We did a lot of that today. 
really felt my shoulders burning. Reaching out, getting those fingertips splayed, come back in, three, elbows all the way down to the hips, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, yes. Ha ha. Look at all the good stuff you just did for your abs, for your heart, for your brain. Happy, smiling, sweaty people. So at the end of the day, to take it back to the beginning, Tamar Boggs and Chris Garcia, they dropped what they were doing. They, they allowed themselves to be interrupted with their busy lives, and they showed up with what they had to, to, to make a difference, and it made a huge difference. So it made a huge difference in their lives and the lives of Julia. And uh, again, a lot of times if we overthink things, we just like let our, our fears and our anxieties get in the way of us um, growing and doing the right thing. So not saying you're gonna go out and rescue anybody today, please uh, you know, uh, be conservative, but, um, but just uh, give yourself permission to uh, show up with what you got and do the right thing. All right, Coach Josh, training for Warriors Portland, helping you bring forth the warrior within. <laughs> Brendan Fraser is a treasure. Is a treasure.